Cisco ICE, wireless use case number two, Meraki MX, SSID restriction. All right, we're gonna create a brand new policy set on this one. And we're gonna look for that radius called station ID. And we're gonna look at ends with, and we're gonna have connection T or maybe guest. On that identifier, we're gonna use the default network access protocols. And we're gonna specifically look for those SSIDs. We're also gonna use that in their authentication policy and we're gonna use Active Directory as the authenticating mechanism that's gonna be used. Again, this could be an identity source sequence where you're looking for multiple different identities. In my case, I'm really tying these to a specific Active Directory domain. We got an HR user, AD. We've got to make sure they're part of this Mac list called 802.1x allowed. Uh, they have to be coming from that connection T, right? As an example as well. And then we've got this last use case with guests where we're going to actually redirect the splash page to ICE from Meraki. And we're looking for that service type login. We're also looking for guest in the end of the SSID. Here's the defaults right now. Um, you can see that I haven't changed anything. There's an 802.1x, and we're going to try that initially to log in. Now, when we look at the elements here, this is exactly what I was just talking about, right, uh, in the previous slide. So, again, I'm just showing you that the policy is actually built here, and we're looking for those sp specific parameters that we just talked about in the, the intro slide. So the first one we're gonna try very quickly is um, we're gonna try the 802.1x HR1 user. And here's the device that's in that identity group that, that we're looking for as well. So the user can't log in from any asset, it has to be a specific device. In this case, it's an iPhone. I'm logging in as we speak. You see this HR1 user, everything looks good, but it hit this default authentication policy, right? And it also hits the authorization policy in that default uh, policy set. And so what happened here is I have this very similar policy, but because we weren't able to uh, pick up the SSID with that appended name of connection T or ends with connection T, um, it used 802.1x, right, because that was the SSID name, and it logged in and it hit here and it incremented by one. And this makes sense, right, because we, we haven't changed the SSID. We're using the original one that we created from the beginning. So what we want to do is append this to that 802.1x, and let's see if we get a different result. So if we go into our live logs, we'll jump over to the Meraki device, we'll add the connection T, and we'll save it out. And now we're gonna log in. Now this is gonna happen quick. I just logged in and you can see the authorization and authentication policy now hit that connection T. So that, that happened very, very quickly, right? Um, but you can see it there and if you need to pause the video and have a look, please do. Let's jump to the guest uh, access. And, and so this is open um, and we've got this VLAN assignment that's assigned to it, right? And what we want to do here, though, is go into access control. There's a couple things that you have to do. First off, go into access control and select that VLAN because what we want to do is have sign on with, and we're going to pick my radius. So my radius, there's the uh, radius server. So again, here, this is an external IP address, right? That's being used because dashboard is going to make the connection to your ICE server. So we actually have to add that as a, a network access device within Identity Services Engine. I've already done that. And in order to do that, I need to figure out what the IP address is that it's coming from. So if you look in your browser, you can see here I've already added forwarding rules, 1812. There's my internal IP of, of ICE, and now I gotta allow that remote IP. So if you look in dashboard, if you do an NS lookup on that n77.meraki.com or whatever it is in your specific dashboard, you can see there's the IP address of that device that's actually going to make that inbound connection. So again, I added here for a forwarding rule. In ICE, I've already added the network access device uh, for that IP address. And now I can 
give it a, a try. And so I've got this Windows 10 host here. I'm going to connect to it. And I've hit guest. Okay, looks okay so far. Put in the username and password here. Let's sign in. And if everything's working, good. I got I got access. Let's check it out. All right. We can see sales one, connection T. Yep. So it hit the right uh, policy set. I've got the right uh, authorization profile assigned to me. Let's just dig into this a little bit more. So again, I can see there's the authentication policy. I know that's part of that policy set that I created. And I've got this authorization uh, result that, that was um, enforced on me. Now, if you're curious on that authorization result, um, if you come back and look at the authorization profiles, I've created one here where I'm actually passing back a, a radius session timeout um, and basically saying after 120 seconds, which is not usable, right? Um, disconnect the session. So the user would have to re-authenticate. So you could do that maybe based on 24 hours as an example. And I talked about ends with called station ID. There it is right there, right? Dash guest. And that's it. Pretty easy, right? Um, to use SSID as an identifier to build policy.